What's up everybody? Welcome to the third video on SQL. This is statisticalprogramming.net and in this video we're going to work on filling out your SQL knowledge in about 10 minutes. We'll see if we can do that. All right. The first thing I want to do in this video is to go through a lot of the different vocabulary and recipes you have for creating good SQL uh, scripts. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the options you have when you're just uh, pulling a basic select statement, which is pulling down data from a database. Um, the select statement allows you to manipulate columns in a lot of ways other than just pulling down the columns themselves. And in the previous two videos, I may have referenced things like count or sum, but I didn't actually explicitly talk about the way that they could be used or definitely didn't catalog all the different um, formulas out there for you. So to start things off, this is just going to be an introduction to things you can do at the column level. So we'll start with this example, column one. And the first thing we can do is we can give it a nickname. So it doesn't have to come out as column one. If we don't give it a nickname and we're just pulling that one column, it's going to re retain that same column in our results query. But we can call it anything we want. Um, you can do as a nickname or just a nickname. Um, either one, SQL will accept either. But the, uh, the preferred method, at least to me, it's a lot more readable to say as the nickname. All right, next, you can add two columns together. Now, this is much different than the sum function, which aggregates data, and we'll get to that later. But when you do one column plus another column, what it does is it basically takes the sum at a row level. So you're still going to have the same amount of rows, but you're just going to do the sum at a row level. And that's the same thing when we do subtraction here, kind of switch fast for you. Um, the subtraction again at the row level, so it's going to come out something like four minus four is zero, two minus two is zero. These are the exact same columns, so all the rows will be zero. Maybe not the best example, uh, but I hope you, hopefully you get the idea. Same with the multiplication, you're multiplying across, and same with division, you can just divide right across. Another thing you can do that'll be, um, you know, evaluated at the row level would be something like an LN or some other sort of transformation on the data. So the natural log will transform each uh, each of these values into the, into their natural log. So now I've got an example here of something that's also going to return results at the row level. So and what I mean by row level is I mean not aggregated. You're going to get as many results as you uh, selected from the table. And in this case, it's called a case when statement. And what that does is basically lets us add some nice if then logic to your queries so that you can really get specific in what you're actually pulling down. So when I do select case when, in this case, I want it when YouTube videos views are over 30. So uh, this is uh, assuming that I have a really, um, you know, bad output in my channel and I'm getting basically a few views a year. So when I want to only select these results when the YouTube views are greater than 30 for this year, as you can see from my David data set. So I'm, then I'm going to label it good year. And then the other part of this case when uh, clause, so you have the case when some logic, then the word then, and that basically says when it's this logic, then do this. You also at the end can specify else and else says, when it hasn't, you know, uh, when it hasn't met the criteria that I've already given you, then do this. So in this case, if it's not a good year, we're just going to say that's a pretty bad year. We're just going to say bad year right there. The last and most important thing, and something that if you're new to SQL, you'll probably forget all the time, and it'll be really frustrating, is you need to put an end at the end of that case when statement, or it doesn't know what it's doing. Um, so if you're ever running a case when and you are getting a bunch of errors, then there's a very good possibility you forgot about that end statement. So that is a very, very basic uh, example of case when. But as you can see with your output, it labels every single row. It labels those with YouTube views over 30 good year and without bad year. But what if we want to do something a little more elaborate? Um, well, then we can move down that else statement and we can actually put in another when statement. So let's say if YouTube videos are greater than 30, that's a good year. But when YouTube videos are greater than or equal to 40, then that's a great year. 
And we're actually pretty much not limited on the amount of when statements we can include. So you can get very, very precise. And it's also just a really nice format. Uh, there's nothing nested or anything like that. Um, but you can get really, really precise in how many different, in, in having a lot of different options and way to evaluate things all in the same column. So as you can see here, there's now a difference in our output. The last two years, 2015 and 2016, was really cooking. Got more than 40 year of, or 40 or greater views, and that was a great year. So that's the case when statement. Another interesting uh, kind of logic-based uh, columnar is coalesce. So in this, in coalesce, uh, this is a basically a problem that happens a lot in SQL is when you have null values. And coalesce is there to help you know what to do when you have no values. So when you have a null value like these blanks in my cuss nickname column, uh, with coalesce, you can either specify a column from which to pull from, or you can give it some string value. And in that case, it'll just insert that string value into any null. Um, but if you give it a column, then what it's gonna do is it's just gonna pull in from that same row um, the the uh, the value from the other column. So in this case, I want that cuss nickname. Let's say I'm emailing these customers, but if worst comes to worst and I don't know their nickname, I'm just gonna call them by their regular name. And so you can see here that for most, we got the value, for example, from for Bob, we got the value of his nickname, but for James, since there was no value there, we just pulled in his actual name. So as I mentioned, you can also do something like uh, a string like stranger. And in that case, it, you know, if we don't know their nickname, we want to kind of call it out. We can say, hey, they're a stranger in our email. Um, and that way we'll just pull out uh, the, we'll just specify the string. Now notice coalesce went away and now it says if null. Well, this is another way you can write it in SQL. Um, in some SQL languages, you can do more than one. Um, there are some, uh, there are some SQL languages that have to, you have to be very specific. Um, but so I'm just going to go through um, a couple of these of these functions that do the exact same thing. So if null does the same thing as coalesce, uh, so does is null, and so does uh, NVL. Um, it just depends on whatever language you're using. So that was coalesce. Uh, that's just super helpful, I think, and especially in like functional, um, you know, transactional programming. Um, this next one is uh, uh, one of my favorites. I think this is a uh, something that's maybe not as well known, um, but it's the case where you want to use. Do you want to reference the row immediately before uh, the 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 current row in the same column or maybe in a different column? But it's it's a little tricky. But this is uh, so. Let's just look at our example here and. I've got years, and as you can see, they're nicely ordered uh, chronologically, and then I've got some other values here. And let's say these are sales, uh, we can just say sales. And what we wanna do is we wanna see what that year over year growth in sales was every year. So to do that, we would need to subtract uh, the, the growth from the year before it. Um, and we could obviously pull our data into some environment and do it that way, but you can actually just do this in SQL. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna reference that column again, and we're gonna wrap it in the lag column, the, the lag function rather. And what lag does is it basically, it, it does exactly what I'm describing. It gives you the, the value right before it. Now, lag also takes an argument over, and over is kind of used in a lot of different SQL functions. Um, and the way I think about it is it specifies the format of your data as you're doing, as you're calling the function. So in this case, I'm over, I'm lagging over my data that is ordered by year. Um, it can be a little funky, but um, the more you see the, the over clause, I think the more comfortable you'll get with it. So in this case, I definitely want my, my uh, data ordered by year, which I already show here. Uh, we're doing column one minus lag column two, and that's gonna have the effect of subtracting the each column, each row in the column by the row before it. And that, then we get our result here. And we can really see that 2012 was our breakout year. So that was one of my favorites. Uh, another good one is, uh, is this uh, is a sum column um, function. So this is basically just an aggregation. So before we were adding two columns together and we were basically getting the same amount of rows as the data that we selected. 
Well, now we are aggregating this data into a single value or a single value grouped by some um, some other value. Uh, and I, I already referenced group by, and, and that was in uh, the first video in this series. So you can see those values, they all summed up to one. Uh, some other aggregating functions are like count. This will give us a count of every single uh, item we have in our column. Another really um, useful one is this count distinct, which is just giving me the account of all the unique values in my column. Um, if you can, if you're looking closely, you can see there are two twos in my column here. So what we're going to have to do is we're, we're going to end up with a value one less than uh, than the total count for the column. So instead of six, we get five. Another one, you can do a lot of different statistical operations uh, in SQL. So you can do the mean, the median, and uh, the sta standard deviation. So we'll pull that. So that's basically a quick overview of some of the different things you can do in select statement while selecting columns. Obviously, that's not all there is. And obviously, you know, when you're using this, you, you'll, you'll, you'll have your favorites or your, your ones that are most useful to you. But hopefully that gave you just a quick taste of what's out there. Uh, I know when I was starting to learn SQL and uh, using it, I would come across a function and uh, like lag is a really good example and just being like, why did I not know that before? Because for lag, to be honest with you, I was pulling a whole bunch of my data into something like Python and running a massive loop to do operations that I could have just done in my query very quickly on an optimized server, you know, with a lag function. Um, so now I'm going to try and do sort of the same thing with where and uh, and then we'll do a one more topic and then we'll, we'll try and get you out of here in under 10 minutes. So where is a way to basically filter the data? And I, I like to think of it as it really, it filters it, um, it, it, it filters it before you start even selecting it. So the data, so if you do something like a count, uh, you, you don't have to worry that the fact that it's, it's, you know, going to count data and then filter it later, even though it's secondary in the statement, it's basically a filter before you start operating on the da on the data in the select uh, select uh, statement. So kind of a convoluted way to explain it, but it's a filter. Um, in this case, I have a year column here. Year is less than 2013. We'll just get us the ones less than 2013. We can do year in 2011 and 2015. Um, we can also do not in, by the way, um, similar syntax. And then there's also is not null. So don't put does not equal null, which you can do also with, uh, you know, reverse um, or those little alligator greater than less than, less than signs. But it's when you're comparing to null values specifically, you have to say is not null. You can't say equals null or does not equal null. Um, that's just a, a quirk of SQL. And uh, again, if you're getting weird errors, that might be where your problem is. So that's where, as you can see there, it took out a little null value. Um, there's obviously a lot more things you can do with where. If you're interested in more advanced SQL, I think the exists clause is something that's also very, uh, very interesting, but a little more high level than I intended for this video. So the last topic for you is having. And uh, having is, again, one of those things that if you didn't know what it was, you might have wasted a lot of time in the past. So having is like where, but it works basically after a group by. So it's a way to filter, but instead of happening before you pull your data, it's happening after you pull, operate, and group your data. So let me give you an example. So we have these people and they're, they're uh, I have them labeled as visitor, they're clearly not visitor. I think this is a, a mixed example, but instead of visitor, we'll just say character. Obviously Kenny, uh, Stan, and Kyle, I don't need to say where those are from. Um, and they're obviously characters in some TV show, and that TV show has an air date, and uh, I have a data set that counts how many times they swear in that TV show. So for my, the purposes of my uh, data poll here, um, I want to first select uh, each visitor and count how many times they swear in total. So I don't care about each episode. I just want to group them by the visitor and how many times they, they swear overall. So that's what I'm going to do here, and then I get my results to the side there. Now what the having clause does is say, wait a minute, what if I'm only interested in the characters who swear a lot? And for me, that cutoff is greater than four. Well, the having clause is in my original statement here. And what it does is it takes my result and it applies that additional numerical filter on it. 
So now I get rid of Kenny and I just have Stan and Kyle who both swore more than four times. So for whatever reason, that was clearly relevant to my uh, analysis. Uh, well, this has been fun. I really hope you hope you did it. I hope I got it under 10 minutes. I'll, I'll check the clock. Uh, thanks and see you next time.